So I'm going to Japan and this is my wish list. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classes with a Quirk, where we talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. This is the kind of content you find interesting. Please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. So uh, I'm going to Japan. I've talked about this nonstop for weeks. I hope that's fine because I'm going to keep talking about it until I go and then I'm going to be talking about it while I'm there and then I'm going to talk about it when I get back. I'm really excited if you couldn't tell. My last trip to Japan was in 2019. I haven't been back uh, obviously since since then. Uh, I was able to go right before everything kind of shut down. It was really good planning and I went with my sibling. It was kind of like one of their bucket list trips and it was really really great. It was a great time. Had a lot of fun but because I was with uh, my sibling and it was we were doing a lot of like stuff that they wanted to do, I didn't do a lot of like luxury shopping because it's not really an interest of theirs and that's totally fine but I am going back again and I'm going to be doing some luxury shopping and I have a wish list for things that I'm going to be keeping an eye out for while I'm there. Now I want to say first and foremost I am not getting everything on this list. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I, I, I couldn't afford to get everything on this list, honestly, because I have a lot of different things that I uh, really want to find and, and see, but I'm probably going to get at least one or two things off this list if I can find them, because all the things that I'm going to be talking about today are things that I really, really want to one see in person, because some of the stuff that I haven't been able to see in person, because a lot of them are vintage styles and discontinued styles, so I haven't been able to ever try them on. I just like them, I know that they exist. And two, I want to, wait, what was I talking about? See them in person. Oh, and two, uh, the prices in the Japanese pre-love market can be very good, much better than the US. There's a, a markup often in, in the US. So I'm hoping to find some uh, deals or some, some less expensive pieces for what I'm looking for. I have a budget in mind. I've been saving money for quite a while. Um, I did buy a Kelly this year you know, I wasn't expecting to. And actually it's sort of funny about that because one of the things that I'm going to be looking for in, in Japan is, is Hermes. And I had been saving a, a fair amount of money for purchasing a, a potential Hermes piece in Japan. And then when, when my uh, Kelly popped up, the box calf one, I actually have it right here. When this Kelly popped up on the real reel, I, I, I hadn't planned on buying a, a Kelly that month. I hadn't buy, planned on buying a Kelly in the US. I had been planning on buying the, the Kelly if I found one in, in Japan, obviously. But I had the money saved up already and I agonized for a little bit over this decision because I was like, I really would like to have the funds in, in Japan, obviously. But I was talking to Caleb and Megan uh, a lot about this decision and finally I, I did decide like to get it because I could 100% definitely get this bag uh, you know, in, in July when I purchased it, I didn't know what I would find in Japan. So it didn't make sense to wait, miss out on this, and then maybe not find anything while I was there. So that's why I ended up purchasing it. So my Japan bundles did go down a little bit. Vroom vroom. That's why I decided to purchase it when I did. So my Japan funds did go down by the amount of this Kelly, what it cost, but I still have been saving for a while and I haven't really bought a whole lot this year, like in total in general. So I, I do have, you know, what I, what I have saved. So I'm very excited to see what I can find. And yeah, so I thought it would just be fun to share a little bit about what my wish list is. Now my wish list is primarily vintage Chanel and vintage Hermes. Like I'm going to be looking at everything. I'm so excited. And if I find something that's not on this list and it's great and I want to get it, I will let myself do that. But I have specific bags and, and styles that I, I particularly would like to look for. And these are all uh, vintage styles. I think I said that already. So the first one on my list uh, is a Chanel bag. I'm going to do them in order. So I'll do Chanel, Hermes, and then my wild card. So the, the first bag on my list is this Chanel bag. Uh, it is literally just called the all vintage Chanel. Chanel's terrible at naming things. Like they barely name their colors. They're like pink, pink, what other pink, different pink, a Chanel bag with flap, Chanel bag with chain, Chanel bag with flap and with chain. Not helpful, but I, I know what it looks like. And I can ask, you know, like, do you have this bag? Like I can show them a picture. Um, if it's not on display, I don't know. I'll see. I'm excited. I, I will be taking you with me when I go to Japan. I'm planning on doing a, a several vlogs, uh, including a shopping vlog about the luxury stores that I go to. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already to get notified, notificated, what? To get notified when I post that video. Uh, but yeah, so the first bag on my list is 
this one. I'm all over the place. Can you tell that I'm really excited? I'm very excited. I'm just also stressed. I'm trying to get ready for it and I'm stressed. Anyway, this bag, this one, it is a Chanel flat bag style with the bijou chain, this beautiful gold chain and this like intricate styled turn lock. I love this bag. I think it's gorgeous. It's been on my list for a while and I've almost purchased it uh, pre-loved online several times, but I've been sort of holding off in part because I wanted to, I knew I was going to Japan this year and I kind of wanted to wait to, to see what I could find there. It comes in two styles, a small and a medium, and the small has slightly less quilting across, like the medium has uh, five quilting, I think, and the small has four. The small fits a little less, uh, obviously, but they're both like sort of narrow bags, so they fit close to the body. It is a long shoulder crossbody style, but you, because of the bijou chain, you also could easily adjust the chain to wear it like short shoulder. And I just think it would be a really versatile bag. I think it's so beautiful. I love the bijou chain, and I really would like to add this to my collection. So that's kind of like first on my list. That's the bag that I'm really, if I see this bag for a good price, that's probably the bag that I'm going to buy, you know, unless something else drastic happens or I find like a dream different one. But that is a bag that is kind of like, if I find this one, that's that's probably what I'm going to get unless I see it in person and I hate it, which I don't think will happen, but I don't know, maybe. The next bag on my list is another vintage Chanel bag. It's this vintage Chanel flap. And it's actually, a, I believe, a single flap bag, but it's in the medium flap style. And this bag is actually really cool because it can come with a wallet insert that snaps the inside of the bag, the back pocket, and they can be sold with the wallet insert and without. It's a little bit more expensive with the wallet insert usually, but without, you can often get a deal. I would love to have a full set with the wallet insert, but it, I mean, I, I kind of want to see it in person because I've never tried this particular bag on. I've seen it a few times um, on, on in videos and stuff, and obviously in pictures, I've seen what it looks like on, but I'd love to see kind of how the shape sits on me. I do like the flap style. I think it's very interesting, but I do kind of want to see it in person. So I'm a little bit more on the fence about this one, but I really, I do really like it. Uh, so I, I just want the chance to see it in person and it's a fairly common vintage style. So I get the feeling that I'll be able to see it uh, if I do keep an eye out. The final Chanel bag on my list is one that I've gone back and forth over because I, <laughs> uh, it's, it's this one. It is this vintage Chanel jumbo with the giant CCs in the beige and the diamond quilting. Oh gosh, okay, so I love this bag. I, I love my jumbos. I have two. I have one in the Mademoiselle quilting and one in brown caviar. I love them both. I especially love uh, vintage lambskin. Uh, all these bags are in lambskin, by the way. I, I love vintage lambskin, and the, the Mademoiselle jumbo that I have is so beautiful. It's so buttery. The lambskin is still like thick and robust. I love it, but I loved the Chanel beige with the, the gold hardware, the alloy plated hardware, the 24 karat gold alloy plated. I just think it's so beautiful, like that rich buttery yellow gold with the, the bright beige lambskin. I think it's beautiful. Jamie from Let's Petite has this particular jumbo, the, the Giant CC is one in beige, and I have watched the video that she has shared that in uh, probably four or five times at this point, just because I love looking at the bag. So I'll link that video for you down below. Uh, she's fun. Uh, I recommend giving her a watch anyway, but the bag is gorgeous. It's, it's, go it's gorgeous. Now I love beige with gold. I actually have several beige with gold bags, uh, primarily from YSL. I have a YSL mini loop camera bag, for instance, that's beige with gold hardware, and I really love it. Now the, the bag with the bijou chain that I showed you earlier in black, that also comes in beige. And I've seen it also in the pre-love market in beige with the gold hardware. And I've also almost pulled the trigger on that one too from Japanese resellers, but have been holding off. I think that between the two styles, I would prefer the jumbo over the, the bijou chain one in beige because I do have smaller crossbody bags in beige with gold hardware that I don't want them to necessarily compete. Whereas I think that if I had the jumbo, it wouldn't compete with my other jumbos because it's a it's a very different color. Does that make sense? I, I think so. But I, I want to see it all in person. What I'm probably going to do is go to stores multiple times and like see them, see what else I can find and see like everything and compare. And then when I've made my decision, I'll probably like go back to the stores that have the things I want and then make my final purchases near the tail end of my trip. That's sort of my plan. But yeah, so those are the three bags and the two different colors that I've kind of got my eye out for in Chanel. I, I do think that the, the beige with gold hardware is gorgeous. I think the jumbo is absolutely beautiful. I really, really do. But I think that if I had to choose between the two, 
I would probably choose the black one unless something, was, you know, in person was very different. Uh, because I, I think that in terms of what I have in my collection, the variety I want, uh, the Bijou chain would offer me a little bit more than another jumbo in a in a light color. But uh, I'll have to see. I'll, I'll see in person when I go. Oh, actually. Speaking of the light color, my brown jumbo, I had actually talked about the fact that I didn't wear it very often. Why am I interested in a beige jumbo if I already don't really wear my brown super often? It's a dark brown versus the beige, which is like a milk tea, like a lighter, milkier color. And I think that that just would be more versatile for me in general. Like I wear my beige bags. I just don't wear my brown bags as often. So I think that having a lighter color bag, even if it's in like the beige brown color story would be fine. Yeah. Okay, that's it. That's that's so that's my those are my Chanel wish lists and those are the things that I'm keeping an eye out for on Chanel. Moving on to Hermes, I do have several bags in Hermes that I am interested in looking at. They're all vintage styles. Now I do think that I will probably be keeping an eye out for uh, Hermes, uh, Birkins, and Kellys, and keeping an eye out for there. There are so many stores that carry them. There's there's so many. They're not uncommon to be carried in pre love luxury uh, stores and Japan boutiques. So I'm not scared I'm not going to find any, but because they are going to be many, I think, in these pre-loved boutiques, I'm going to be able to try them on. And I really, I've never, you know, had the opportunity to try on a Birkin and Hermes. So I'd love to try on the different styles. I'd love to see what the 35 actually looks like on versus the 30. I think that the 30 would be my ideal Birkin size if I was interested in getting a Birkin, but I don't know if the 35 would also be fine. I do have some bags that are about that width. And for a Birkin, it would be more of like a work tote bag for me or something like that. So I, I don't think it would be too big necessarily, but I'd love to see it on and just try it. I don't think I'm gonna be coming home with a Birkin. I I mean, I, I don't think so, but it is something that I wanted to try and just kind of see what it looked like on. So it's something that I'm looking for, but probably not something that I'm going to buy. Same with the Kellys. I, I do have my Kelly 32. I, I showed it to you already um, in the box cap with blue jean. I love it. I, I really, really do. I'm taking it with me to Japan, actually, as my daily carry bag. I made a video about other bags that I'm taking with me to Japan, which I don't know if it's come out before this or it's coming out after this, but I will link it once it is out so you can watch it if you want to. I, I, I don't necessarily think that I need to, to try to find a quota bag. You know, I have one and I, I just, I'd like to see them in person, but probably not a purchase. In terms of what I'm looking for in Hermes though, gosh, I've been going on tangents. I have I have a few different styles. So the first style I'm interested in is the Fonce Bell. This is a style that I've been interested in quite some time, uh, primarily in box calf. And it is a really cool style because the strap is adjustable. It can be uh, worn long or short shoulder. And I really like that. It doesn't have as interesting a clasp as I've been looking for with Hermes, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, but I think it's a very, very classy looking, elegant, understated bag. And it's just then one that I would like to see in person. Um, another bag that I would love to see in person is the Odeon. I believe that's what this bag is called. I found it um, originally on, I think, the purse forum. Somebody was sharing like their vintage Hermes collection on a, a forum, and I saw this bag, the Odeon, and I thought it was so gorgeous. It seems to be a very versatile bag. It's also a bag that the shoulder strap can adjust, so it can be adjusted long or short. I love the clasp on it. I think it's so beautiful. I think it's so classy. And that's kind of one of the, the first bags that if I found it, it would be a very big temptation for Vintage Hermes if I liked it in person when I, when I found it, it was in good condition. Uh, nice thing about Vintage Hermes too is that they are older, which sounds obvious, but I'd love a bag from the 70s or before. Uh, I really would love a 60s or 50s vintage Hermes bag. Uh, I just, I, I would love something like that, like a really old heritage box calf leather from like 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago. I think that would be super duper cool. So that is something that I'm going to be keeping an eye out for, like older, older vintage Hermes bags. And for instance, if I see like a Kelly from like the 60s or 50s, that would be a temptation. That would really be a temptation. It's not like necessarily on my list, but if I saw one that, that was that age and in good condition for a price that I was comfortable with, like, I don't, I'm not saying that I would come home with a Kelly, but like, I would think really hard about it maybe. So the Odeon is one that I'm thinking about. Another one that I'm thinking about is a Sac Vasco. This is a bag that I talked about before on my channel. I love the clasp on it. I think it's so interesting. Now the Sac Vasco is a top handle only. I've only seen it one time with a longer shoulder strap. Um, I think on Vestier Collective a while back, but 
It normally is a top handle only, only bag. I think that's fine because I do carry a lot of my bags top handle. I'm very comfortable with that or crook of the arm. I really love what Hermes can do with hardware sometimes, which I don't see as many people talking about. Uh, they talk about, you know, the singles and the hardware on, on the Tourette's and stuff, but I don't see necessarily people talking about the interesting clasps that Hermes sometimes does. And I think that those are also just like really worth a second look. So the Sac Vasco is one. And the final bag uh, I'm interested in for Hermes is the Codelier, which is also a top handle only style with a really interesting clasp. I love the twisting of the, the metals in this one. I just think it's so beautiful. And it is a one that I've seen a number of times in the pre-love market. So I don't think that it's necessarily an uncommon bag. And the Codelier is also one that I've seen old and so uh it's it's one of the ones that is on my list because i think that it is you know possible to get like a 60s codelier and i think that would be really cool so that's that's one that i'm definitely going to be keeping an eye out for the final bag slash brand on my list is actually delvo now you probably know if you've been on this channel before i am a very big delvo fan it is one of my favorite luxury houses i love the makes of their bags i love the leathers especially their box calf i mean actually i think box calf is just my favorite leather um, uh, but I love Delvo's box calf and I have been really interested in the mini Briant. I have a Briant NMM, but the mini Briant is just a little smaller, uh, carry bag. And I think it's so cute. I've tried it on before. I actually went to New York a few weeks ago, uh, to visit Trey Gromelligan and some family. And I vlogged the trip. I'll link that video for you down below, but I was able to go to the Delvo, uh, flagship boutique in New York and try on a bunch of their bags. And I love the mini Briant. I really, really do. And I especially love it in the fall winter bloom color, this beautiful, beautiful pink. I loved that color when I saw it first being released, when I saw it online. I tried it on in person and really fell in love with it. It's this beautiful, like perfect baby pink. And I really, really love it. It's like my ideal pink. It is a very expensive bag because that would be a new in boutique bag. The thing is, if I was purchasing it in Japan, I wouldn't be having to pay tax. They do have price harmonization. So it would be in yen about the same cost in, in USD, but I would not have to be paying tax on it. So I would be saving like the tax money essentially on it if I was purchasing it in Japan. Now, I don't think necessarily it would be worth buying a new bag in Japan and then having to take it overseas and through customs to make it like worth it necessarily in America. I could just buy the tax in America, but I still wanna try it on. I wanna see it in person again. And I have been saving money obviously. And that's one of the reasons I didn't buy the Bloom Delvo in New York. It's because I was saving for my Japan trip. But in the event that for some reason I look at all the bags or I don't find any of the bags or just none of the bags I find speak to me as much as the mini Briant does in the bloom color, I would probably take the money that I've saved, maybe not purchase anything in Japan or not purchase anything big and then buy the Devo bloom um, when I get back to the States. That's kind of what I was thinking about about doing. Now, aside from that though, Delvo does not have the best resale value. It, it, it doesn't, unfortunately. It's not as popular as brands like Chanel or, or Hermes or Louis Vuitton, and it doesn't sell uh, very well in the pre-love market. So I know that if I bought the bag new, I'd instantly be losing like half the value at least. But that also means that if I find Delvo on the pre-love market in Japan while I'm there, I have the opportunity to make a really, really good deal. And I've seen uh, Japanese sellers be selling Delvo for thousands of thousands of dollars under retail. So I'm gonna be keeping my eye out for Delvo as well. And, you know, I've seen it occasionally pop up on the pre-love market, like the, the bloom color uh, once or twice. Uh, I, I'm not sure why someone would be buying a new piece, wearing it like three times and then reselling it, but you know, no judgment. Some people do that. So, hey, you know, uh, better for me if they do. So if I find it on the pre-love market, the bloom, uh, obviously that would be hugely, hugely tempting. But if I also find it in like, there are these purple colors that I think are really beautiful. I, I would love a black with gold hardware uh, on mini Briant for like evening or just like a smaller daily bag or, or for a variety of, of shape. And so I'm just gonna be keeping my eye out for Delvo when I go. As I said before in the beginning, I'm not getting every bag on this list. Like absolutely not. I'm not buying like four Hermes bags or three Chanel bags or six Delvo bags, if, you know, unless I find six Delvo bags for like a thousand dollars each or something. Like I, I'm, I'm not getting everything on this list. Uh, it's just a list of 
wish list items that I'm going to be keeping an eye out for. And then as I find what I'm interested in, I'll be narrowing it down to like the top two or three or something like that. Uh, but I thought that it would be fun to share with you the things that I'm looking for and also sharing with you some of the bags that you can find on the pre-loved market, uh, not necessarily just in Japan, but in general, like these are all bags, styles that I don't see talked about necessarily a lot. And so if you're interested in any of these styles or you didn't know about these styles that they, they didn't exist, then I thought that it would be fun to just kind of share those with you. So I hope that you enjoyed. If there was anything on this list that was your favorite, I'd love for you to let me know. Or if you haven't heard about any of these things before, I, I'd love for you to tell me if I've shared something new with you. Uh, if there is a preload bag that you have your eye out for, I'd love to hear about it. Please do share in a comment down below. And if you like this video, please do give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content that helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.